Hi all, Kevin Moore here with Game Master Concepts Episode 8, The Adventurer's Guild. If you have a guild, you have a series of rules and a charter. If you have a guild, you have a hierarchy. If you have a guild, you have relative order. And if people want to be a part of this guild, they need to be evaluated. Now, the problem I've seen in most RPGs when it comes to having an adventuring guild is they don't take these concepts into consideration. You, it, you have a quasi-medieval setting in most cases. Being an adventurer is a privilege. Um, <laughs> if you wanted to be a, min, a mundane individual, you could be a farmer, you could be a blacksmith, you could be any number one of these things that you decided to give up to go adventuring. Start your party off with an evaluator. A, a small group of mercenaries that have a few levels under their belt and the mercenaries are there to protect and guide the new adventurers. Stuff happens, right? But being a part of a guild, you need to earn your stripes. Do not just hand players the gold. Do not just hand players the treasure. No, they belong to a guild and they are earning their keep initially, right? They haven't proven their stripes. They haven't earned their, they haven't proven their colors or earned their stripes is what I meant. By allowing a player to keep all the treasure that they've accumulated, you're denying the fact of the world. You want players to appreciate what they get. And even if all they get is a little experience, some money, and the knowledge that this little farmstead that they just saved, because they went into the goblin caves and cleared it out, with a higher level mercenary kind of watching and protecting them initially. If that's what they got, that was an adventure. That was levels above spending an entire day farming, afraid that a goblin was gonna come in from that cave and kill their family. <clears throat> World consistency matters, and the Adventurer's Guild needs to reflect that. It... Look, man, you gave up farming. That doesn't mean nobody's above you anymore. People are above you. Otherwise, you wouldn't have to deal with society. If you're in a guild, you're a part of a society. Then, when they achieve certain ranks and privileges within the guild, they find out new things. They find out about competing adventurous guilds from other towns that take on more risky endeavors. They find out that the guy in charge of their adventurous guild uh, sent uh, the mercenary they grew to love away and he might be in trouble now. Right? So then they're like, hey, uh, you remember Bob? Bob went over to uh, Eastvale and Eastvale is about three days away. One of our affiliated adventurers guilds over there um... Uh, they had some dragon problem 
Uh, could you guys go check on Bob? Because we really need our Master at Arms back, if possible. Also, his wife's looking for him. Please bring him back before his wife comes back. Please. Okay. If you have Bob, the Master at Arms for the guild, training these characters, making sure they are proficient at adventuring before they're left to their own devices, they are more likely to survive. You have a world. You have a plot. You have a theory. Um... And if you've ever been through basic training, there's a reason why you're treated like dog crap. Okay? Because you need to know that the world isn't going to coddle you. That's simple, right? Don't coddle your adventurers. They are there to learn about the harsh realities of life. Okay? Okay? You're talking about shoving a spear into something's neck because it's you or the goblin. Okay? The goblin has no concept of our families. The goblin has no concept of ownership. The goblin has no concept of regional authority. The goblin is hungry. The goblin likes shiny things. The goblin is willing to kill for food and shiny things. Now I'm simplifying. The goblin will also kill because it doesn't know about the dangers of alchemy. Yes. Make your goblins interesting. Start them off with a base concept and then build them individually. Your Adventurer's Guild should be leagues above anything that you read about because there's consistency. If you've ever watched some anime, they just say, oh, sign this sheet, and then um, Tower of Draga does a good job. They hook the new guy up with the more experienced adventurers, and that's pretty cool. Um, but definitely consider what would make the Adventurers Guild a more tangible reality for your world, especially. You need rules, simple rules, okay? Do not overthink this, because the moment you overthink, you can't act on the fly based on... Come up with a small charter of, like, eight rules. Right? Eight rules. And if your players break that tendency, mark it against their personal guild score. Right? Definitely have an evaluation score. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII, uh, Quistus helped Squall through the cave on his test. And that to me was interesting because it's a survival evaluation. Therefore, the evaluator is also in danger. And that means everything. All right, so that's uh, Game Master Concepts number eight, The Adventurer's Guild. All right, thanks, guys.